Ready, Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair. Going to call to order the Planning Commission special meeting on May 26, 2021. Can we have a roll call? Commissioner Whitren. Present. Commissioner Wardilla. Here. Commissioner Ramone. Here. Commissioner Prickett. Here. Commissioner Wilcox. Here. Commissioner Allen, he let us know he would not be here this evening. Chair Staffinson. Uh, Mr. Staffinson will likely not be here this evening. All right, then we have quorum. Okay, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to this flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there any public comment on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we'll have Chris read the public hearing procedures. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. the wrong document pulled up, Mr. Chair. So forgive me one moment while I pull it up. You are not the historical landmarks commission. The matters for tonight's meeting are as followed. Case file LU-0005-2021 T-Mobile Tower Modification, a type three application and case file 71-01, housing needs analysis adoption type four application. Before we begin the hearing for tonight's agenda items, I would like to explain a little bit about the Planning Commission and the procedure we will be following for the public hearing. The Planning Commission is an appointed seven member volunteer body of Troutdale citizens. A member of the commission are Troutdale residents who have been appointed by the city council. They serve alternating terms. They are strictly volunteers and receive no pay for their services. The Planning Commission serves as a citizen committee for the review of certain land use applications within the city. Items which the Planning Commission can consider include <coughs> uses of lands, subdivisions, major variances, land use policy plans and development regulations. For some land use applications, the Commission makes a final decision. For other applications, they are simply making a recommendation to City Council who renders the final, commission, uh, final decision. Planning Commission public hearings are held in accordance with Oregon law and procedures contained in the Troutdale Development Code. The hearing proceeds as follows. City staff will present the report, which will include applicable criteria and standards for the matter under consideration in the application. All testimony and evidence should be directed toward these criteria. If you believe other criteria in the comprehensive plan, development code, or other city land use regulations apply, you must identify these criteria and explain why they apply to the decision. The chair will open the hearing to accept public testimony relating to the application. The applicant will be invited to speak first, followed by proponents, then by opponents, and then by any parties neutral to the application. An opportunity will be provided to anyone testifying to clarify any issues raised and the applicant does have the right of rebuttal. Oregon land use law requires all issues raised by a participant during the public hearing must be sufficiently clear and specific to allow the planning commission and other parties an opportunity to respond to the issues. Failure to raise an issue during this public hearing may invalidate a future appeal based on the issue. Prior to the closing of the public hearing, any participant may request an opportunity to present additional evidence or testimony regarding the application. Planning Commission must grant the request by either continuing the public hearing to a future date or by leaving the record open for at least seven days to admit additional written evidence or testimony. If the record is left open for additional written evidence, arguments or testimony, 
any participant may file a written request for an opportunity to respond to new evidence submitted during the period the record was left open. If such a request is filed, the Planning Commission shall reopen the hearing to allow any person to raise new issues which relate to the new evidence, testimony, or criteria or decision making. As a final note, public hearings are recorded. At the appropriate time, please come forward to the table or indicate you would like to speak via Zoom and state your name and address for the record. Please do speak clearly into the microphone if you're in the room. And please, if you are at home and wish to speak, make sure you're unmuted. And for those of you who are not speaking, please mute yourselves if you can. And before we open the hearing, Mr. Chair, uh, the staff would ask, does any member have an ex parte contact or bias to declare? If so, please clearly state for the record the substance of the contact. Any ex parte? I do. Um, Bonnie Lynn is a neighbor. She lives near me. We, we haven't seen each other in life for a while, but we have no, I have not had any contact with her recently on this matter or any matter. Hello, Chris, uh, Chair Wydula. Mr. Wilcox? Uh, yes, I don't have any ex parte, but uh, I wanted to um, confirm my status for tonight's meeting since I missed the first hearing a month ago. I, I did listen to the entire uh, audio of that meeting and have the, all the uh, packet material. But you briefed all the material. Yes, I read all the material. Okay. Uh, does any member have any potential or actual conflict of interest? If so, would you please state for the record the nature of the conflict of interest? <laughs> Sounds like none. And does anyone in the audience wish to challenge the right of any commissioner to hear this matter? I hear none. Okay. Uh, this is a, the first hearing is a continuation of a hearing which was uh, begun on April 28th of 2021. Uh, the uh, staff is prepared to provide an additional report and the applicant intends to provide some additional information uh, would staff want to go first or the applicant first? We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, defer to staff first, and then the applicant will, okay. will provide it, and we're ready to staff open the hearing. Go ahead. Okay. Hearing's open. The hearing is open. All right. Can everyone at home see a screen that says LU 0005 2021? Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. This is again the T Mobile cell tower modification conditional use application continuation of the hearing from uh, April 28th or tonight, the 26th. Staff is not going to spend a tremendous amount of time on its update. We do have the original presentation as well as the original draft findings available that we can pull up on screen. If any commissioner or member of the public wishes to pull them up. Uh, what we wanted to focus on tonight was also the contents with that of the app of the packet that you received, the additional information. So we do have information tonight that was provided in the packet. The applicant is intending to provide additional information tonight, which may be of interest to the committee as well, uh, to the commission, as well as uh, interested members of the public. Staff will go first, followed by the applicant. There would be public testimony, proponents, opponents, neutral parties. The applicant again has the right of rebuttal. You can close the hearing. Planning commission can continue the hearing or make a decision tonight. You are the decision-making entity. This is a type three application tonight. The additional information we provided in the packet were minutes from the 2008 planning commission meeting slash hearing. That was the meeting when the tower in question was originally approved for conditional use. It should be noted it was not a unanimous decision. It was a 5-2 vote uh, in favor of the application at the time. 
Also included in the packet was an FCC fact sheet for May 20th of 2020, which briefly documented the concerns about substantial change and whether or not this constituted a substantial change as far as the FCC requirements, as well as an FCC ruling on local government approvals. After the packet was published, uh, the applicant provided some additional information on an exposure study. However, I would caution before we introduce that information, the applicant may have information they're prepared tonight to present, which uh, may alter that study a little bit as far as the actual um, um, situation that could occur. So I will defer to the applicant to give his chance to do that when we get the chance. So I wanna talk first about this FCC ruling, the Federal Communications Commission ruling. A state or a local government shall approve within 60 days any request for modification to an existing wireless tower or base station that does not substantially change the physical dimensions of such tower or base. The FCC defines the term eligible facilities request as any request for modification of an existing tower or base station that does not substantially change physical dimensions, such tower base station involving three factors, the collection, co-location rather of new transmission equipment, the removal of transmission equipment or the replacement of transmission equipment. The FCC rules provide that changes are substantial if they are one of four factors, exceed defined limits on increases in the height or girth of the structure or the number associated equipment cabinets. It involves any excavation, it involves deployment on ground outside a structure's current site or defeat the concealment elements of pre-existing structure. And the fourth, which we've highlighted, violate conditions previously imposed by the local zoning authority. That is probably the principal concern for you all in order for you to have confidence to make a decision one way or the other. In the packet, we did provide the minutes of the meeting where you could see some discussion. Uh, on the screen here were the conditions of approval that were approved as part of the conditional use application from 2008. Uh, they are here on screen. Of the ones of the 14 conditions, and there's a second page here, but of the 14 conditions that you see here, I'll go back to this one. Please pay attention to com uh, condition number one. The monopole shall be engineered, designed, and constructed so as to allow the co-location of additional antennae in the future. The maximum height of the monopole shall be 100 feet. That is the probably the primary concerning factor for tonight's meeting as, and, and for this hearing altogether. Some of the other factors are more applicable to the actual construction of the tower itself about talking about permits, uh, FCC guidelines, erosion control. That's really talking more about the specifics of the tower's construction. So what we're getting at here is we as a staff are still maintaining a recommendation of approval from the application as presented thus far. We don't believe that there have been any conditions of approval that have been violated. So by FCC definition, therefore, this is not a substantial change. And therefore, we are obligated, potentially legally, to approve this application in due time. Unless the tower itself or the design of the tower changes, then we would have to consider a new application altogether. One thing I would remind also the Planning Commission, because this was a question that came up um, a month ago is, you know, can we do something to the tower? Are we able to do, you know, place certain conditions? Remind you that if the tower doesn't have the ability to uh, be dressed up, for lack of a better phrase, or if, if there are certain things that prevent from an engineering perspective, any improvements, visual, aesthetic, or otherwise to the tower itself, you still have the ability to place conditions on the property that the tower sits on. And that could include screening or landscaping. And those are conditions that planning staff has already suggested in its conditions of approval. You can choose to elevate them or make them um, stronger if so desired, but um, it's going to be difficult potentially based on our reading and our understanding of the design of the pole to potentially do that unless it's gonna be radically considered or unless uh, the applicant suggests otherwise tonight. So again, we present this information on the information that we've received thus far. 
Uh, my understanding is that the applicant is prepared to provide some additional or new information tonight, which may change uh, some of the information we've provided thus far. Um, but before we bring the applicant up, do you, um, and does anyone have any questions for staff at this point? Do anyone have any questions? Uh, yes. Commissioner Vitrim, go ahead, please. So back to substantial change with the addition of the antennas sticking out across the top, you staff does not feel that that is additional girth that is not substantial enough? Girth would be applied to the pole structure itself based on our understanding of the FCC ruling. So the girth of the antennas do not apply. Yeah, I might add here on the uh, minutes of 521 and 2008, page eight, there's a sentence there, it's typical for a tower to be built then other company collate on the same tower and this tower will accommodate other users that imply from the onset there was an intent to adding towers or the brother. Okay, that's all I have. Go ahead, Mr. Mamoni. Commissioner Mamoni, I think uh, the chair. Uh, yes, yes, thank you very much. Uh, Chris, I appreciate the comments here. Uh, it has clarified much more uh, for me. But I, th I think, um, if I recall correctly, at the end of our comprehensive conversation last month, the outstanding question that we were posing, if I remember, that we were expecting an answer through the, the office of the C attorney was, does the planning commission have jurisdiction uh, to impose a sunset date by which as a condition the, 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 the commission obviously has the ability to, to impose condition, is a condition but do we have also do within the, do we have the authority to impose a sunset day because we, the conversation at a certain point took a tangent it was maybe we can ask the applicant Again, I don't, I don't feel that there is a substantial change. I agree with the staff report, but my concern was about the logistics. It's so close to a residential. The conversation, if you remember correctly, was let's figure out if we have the ability to impose a condition by which we put a sunset. We give 10 years to the applicant to stay at the church, but within 10 years, we sunset this location. And then I was affording the organization uh, the planning department by the city to review his ordinances to see if we would establish different kind of ordinance for location of this cellular tower, which obviously are relevant, but maybe not necessarily in the location where we are right now. And we've been able to get an answer to that because to me, that was the focal point of what I was anticipating to hear today. Either a positive yay or nay from the city attorney where, I'm sorry, commissioner, the, 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 the planning commission has wide authority, but not to impose a sunset date, which, which would break with precedence that I'm familiar with. Sure, and the answer to that is no. There is no sunset ability that we would have. What, if a decision is rendered and it's done within the confines right. of the existing code at the time, the city, planning commission, ultimately city council has always the ability to change a code, you know, if it wishes to impose standards or if, you know, in many ways it can, as you know, it can affect change by grandfathering or non-conforming structures that it wishes to ultimately see be modified, changed or done away with. But it, it cannot place a condition of approval that sunsets its uh, valid nature if there's nothing in the development code that suggests it has the ability to. So since the code does not expressly allow it, it cannot expressly be done. Okay, so the, the, I appreciate that because there's a clear, subtle, subtle definition here. So because the, 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 the current code, as stated, does not allow the planning commission to, in their condition, the, in the wide latitude of, of, of condition to impose a sunset date, to say, we approve you, but all of 14 years or for 15 years or whatever, then the, the answer is no, we cannot. Even though this is a new case because it, the case, the, the decision of 2008 is relevant, but it's relevant to a certain point because today we are in front of you right. and we are a completely different case that might potentially buy, might be in, op in, op in opposition to what was established and decided in 2008. But as we know right now, we don't have that latitude. Right. Very, very well. Thank you very right. much. I appreciate it. Is there any other commissioner with questions from staff?
None. We'll have the applicant come forward. Okay, and please remember to state your name for the record. Yes. And um, I believe the applicant, did you send me a link that you wish to display on the screen or? I did, I sent you a, a, an email. It was an email, okay. So it was a link to, well, we'll get to the point if you can. Okay, give me one moment while I pull that up. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> So commissioners, it's nice to be speaking with you again a, a month after the last hearing. Um, I'm here, there, there are two issues that- Sorry, we're, Tom, can you state your name and address? Oh, I'm sorry, record? my name is Tom McAuliffe. My address is 15349 Southwest Mallard Drive, Unit 102, Beaverton, Oregon, 97007. Um, Last month, when after the hearing, there was two issues that you all seemed to be concerned about, and it also raised my concern because I couldn't speak to them. Um, for first reason, everyone there was a lot of concerns about our permissions. I don't have professionalism. I can tell you that T-Mobile may not exceed the federal bulletin sixty-five. Okay, sorry. Um, but I don't have the professional backing to, to back what I say. So I requested that T-Mobile have somebody come and speak with you professionally. Um, I believe Bill Hammett's on Zoom. Are you there, Bill? Well, it, I mean, Bill Hammett is from Hammond. And yes, okay. here, here I am. Thank you. Um, he's an independent third party engineer with expertise in the field of compliance for safety, safety regulations. So T-Mobile has asked him to speak on their behalf. To, he, they, he can speak to the federal rules and regulations from a place of authority rather than I talk oh. about it just from a place of reading. Okay, if you would. Uh, certainly, good evening. My name is Bill Hammett. I'm a registered professional engineer in California and other states, including Oregon at, from time to time. I manage a firm of 18. We're located in the San Francisco area. And a regular part of our professional practice is the calculation or the measurement of radio frequency exposure conditions. That's been my principal focus for 35 years. And at that time, we've done more than 20,000 site evaluations. And McGraw Hill has published my book on this topic. As engineers, our job is really straightforward. What are the exposure levels and how do they compare to the standards? And since we deal just in facts, we work across the field for uh, carriers, for uh, cities and, and counties, uh, for neighborhood groups. Uh, the, the numbers are what they are. Um, and uh, what we've done in this case is study the materials that uh, were submitted to you uh, by T-Mobile uh, for the drawings, what antennas are proposed, where they're gonna be located, what, how much power they're gonna run. And we projected what the maximum exposure levels would be for anybody in the area. Um, for anybody at ground, uh, the number would be 1.4% of the exposure limit. And I, I say the exposure limit, I'll, I'll mention a little bit more about that in a moment. But uh, we know that's a conservative number. It's got several uh, estimating factors in it that are, are conservative. Uh, at any nearby residence on the second floor, uh, it's 1.8%. Again, we know it's going to be something less than that. Uh, so there's no question that this facility will comply with the federal standards. You know, there are few guarantees in life, but I can make a guarantee that as designed, this facility will comply with the federal standard. And to the issue of, of your, your consideration of that, um, it was an act of Congress in 1996 that declared that a local jurisdiction cannot apply anything tighter than the FCC standard. That is, uh, the cities typically require the carriers or radio station or wh whoever it is uh, uh, with a proposal, they require them to demonstrate that they will comply with the, with the safety standard. And if they do, that's just a threshold condition and local jurisdictions cannot consider the uh, perceived or uh, the perceived health effects as a rationale for rejecting the operation uh, or modification of a facility. That's really short and sweet. Right to the point, I understand that uh, the report I uh, issued uh, dated Monday um, is, is uh, available to you in your packets. 
and uh, I'm available to answer any question you have on on the report itself or on any other aspect uh, um, in terms of operation of antennas and cell cell systems and and the like. Yeah, if I may interrupt a moment, is that report in our packet? The report no. did not make the packet deadline. It is now being shared on your screen here. You'll see okay. the executive summary box, um, but they did not meet the deadline to include it in the packet. So it's being, I have a paper copy for you, Mr. Chair, here. I have anybody in the crowd. Um, and it's here on the screen as well. Yeah, I have 15 copies of it, but then I know who'd be coming. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, just because I know this is a five page report, uh, there is an executive summary box on the front which summarizes uh, the presentation just given, as well as on page three in the middle, a conclusionary statement along with the engineer stamp and seal from Mr. Hammett. Commissioners have an opportunity to scan over this, read over it. And any questions? I can bring it back on screen, commissioners. My apologies. And just for the benefit, I'll go back to page one here real quick. Any commissioners have any questions of the applicant regarding this? Okay, I see none. Do you have anything more to add? Uh, yes, I mean, what I was stating that at the last meeting at the last hearing, uh, there were two, uh, two issues that were spoken about a lot and with some passion. One was the EMF, the EMF emissions, and the other was the aesthetics of the proposed design for the structure. Um, I, I spoke with at and or not at and spoke with T-Mobile, and I got them to agree to do something for the neighborhood. I said, you don't, if you're going to be a, if you're going to be a part of the neighborhood, you need to be a good partner in the neighborhood. So they have agreed to do a monoplane. Um, and you, I don't know, I, again, I didn't come prepared for that. I got the, I got bored of it at, oh, thank you. I got bored of it at uh, 4 p.m. But these pictures here that the director's putting up on the screen, there's some that are good, there are some that are not good. But uh, they've become a lot better. In the 20 years of this, being in this business, there have been some very un, they don't look like, you know, they don't look like Mon they look like pine trees. They just look mon like monopoles with little things hanging off of them. But can you, the one of, the, for me, it's the top right corner. This is the best example of what sites look like these days. The antennas are there, they're semi visible, but the commission can require us to paint it the same color as the foliage, the, the full foliage that's on the tower. That way, minimizing any visibility to it. I mean, aesthetics. I think this is a very good, good solution to the problem. Um, in order to, in order to supply a network to our customers, we need to be able to 
provide antennas and are the radios basically that get up behind the antennas for broadcasting and receiving. So it, that's, that design to me is more appealing than what is proposed right now by T-Mobile. And that's one thing, if this is, if this does get approved, T-Mobile guarantees that they will put plans together that provides something of this nature. Sorry, I'm trying to get this thing in my face. Um, Great. But I mean, I, I can. Do you have questions for me? I, I don't know how to go about it. I any commissioners have any questions? The applicant. Mr. Chair, if I may. If you will. If this is going, and this is directed now to the apple. This is a, a applicant question. If your the intent of T-Mobile is to move forward and commit to a monopine, as you described it, design that fundamentally changes the application, meaning that facts have to be reconsidered as well as findings have to be reconsidered. If that is the direction and if you truly have the authority from T-Mobile and from your, your company to work with the city on this, it's probably in your best interest to withdraw this current application rather than expect a ruling for it because simply put the facts of the matter have changed as well as potential testimony from an applicant and from neighbors would change as well. Okay. Our recommendation would be to work with staff, come up with a design, and then much like we did with this application, it would be a conditional use modification but therefore it's a new application tied with a new design that generates new feedback and commentary from neighboring property owners since this is new information that again changes this application. For sure. I mean, I know this, the shot clock from the federal government kind of puts the limit on you had a here 63 days from the time of application to approval. But what we're saying is that- I know, and that's what I'm saying right. is that it, it, you're saying that right now, Everything, the situation has changed. I haven't right. provided enough evidence to support any yay or nay from the city or from the residents. So I think that's fair. Okay, so do we have it with your authority and you'll, you'll need to say it as a declarative sentence yeah. that you wish to withdraw this application and come back to the planning commission with a new, a de novo application. And we're gonna see a monopole, right, excuse me, a monopine application uh, as, as suggested here. Because yeah. I, I just want to be very clear, if you do that, understand there will not be a decision and this and our planning commission will have to treat it as a de novo application. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, my name is Tom McCall. I'm with SVA Communications. Uh, we own the tower and we will withdraw this application to submit one in the future, in the near future for a monopoly. Is that okay. fair? It's... I... I think that's an appropriate action. So okay. it is withdrawn. Yes, sir. Okay. And you'll submit a new application. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Chair, you just need to close the hearing and the case is over. We'll close the hearing. Thank you. Okay. Motion to close the hearing. I move that we close the hearing. I'll second, second that. We've got a motion and a second. Close the hearing on case number 0005-2021. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. And for, for folks who are on the call, especially folks who are not on the planning commission, a clarification what this means. No decision was made tonight on the design as proposed. A new design would be forwarded to the city for review and much like you were notified for this current case, you will be notified of the new case if you are within the geographic boundary of the case. Decision tonight, opportunity to freshly comment on a new application. Yes, ma'am. It'll be a fresh notification. Right again. Yes. Yep. Same process will be followed. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Look forward to seeing you in two months or so. Okay. okay. We'll be in touch.
Um, Mr. Chair, we did advise a couple of people who had an interest in the next agenda item that this first agenda item would have taken longer than expected. Uh, staff is requesting a recess till eight o'clock and pick up the second application at eight o'clock, if that is okay. We'll recess until eight o'clock. I don't think that requires a motion. Okay. We'll stop, we'll stop recording. We'll keep the meeting open though. Okay, Mr. Chair, I believe we're live. Okay, the Trout Town Planning Commission special meeting May 26, 2021 is now back in session. We should probably have a roll call, make sure everybody's back on. I believe you're muted, Amber. Interesting. Maybe I was unmuted this whole time. Uh, Commissioner Wittrin? Here. Commissioner Wadilla? Here. Commissioner Mamone? Here. Commissioner Prickett? Here. Commissioner Wilcox? Here. And Commissioners Allen and Staffinson, I don't believe, have joined us. Okay, we'll open case file number 7101, how it needs analysis of options. This has been through some modifications to comply with the Oregon administrative rule and the staff will cover what those changes are. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, this is a continuation of the hearing we began two weeks ago. Uh, this is involving a comprehensive land use plan amendment, uh, which is a fancy way of saying updating our comp plan. Uh, and this is in regards to the city's uh, housing needs analysis, which was um, written and mostly accomplished in 2019 and then formally adopted by city council resolution in 2020. Uh, we believe we were set. Uh, this, uh, this body, as well as a couple of additions, worked pretty hard on that. And we believe we had a good working document in compliance with state standard and, and state rulemaking. Uh, we were informed by DLCD, as were a number of communities who adopted their housing need analysis by resolution, that the housing needs analysis actually had to be adopted by ordinance. So we are back to the drawing board now and going through the ordinance process, which in this case also involves updating our comp plan and goal 10 in particular, which is the housing goal, uh, both at the local and at the state planning level. So uh, we did introduce uh, and went through the staff report um, at our last meeting. I will try to hit the high points again, uh, just as a reminder. Again, this is a type four hearing. You folks are making a recommendation to city council. You are not the actual decision-making entity. If you do decide to vote on it tonight or vote for a recommendation one way or the other tonight, you would go to city council uh, on June 9th, on June 23rd, if I have my dates correctly. Excuse me, June 8th and June 22nd uh, on Tuesday, June 8th and June 22nd. Your districts. So again, a housing needs analysis is a required document by the state. It is a um, basically takes inventory of the city's housing policies as well as inventories the land through what we call a buildable lands inventory. And it determines whether or not a city has proper housing strategies and policies moving forward that it can maintain a temporal supply of housing for all income levels for at least a 20 year period. There were changes to state law a couple of years ago with House Bill 2003, which required cities now to begin updating their housing needs analyses every six years. For Troutdale, it had been almost 10 years since its last one, and that was during the periodic review process uh, that several of you went through in 2011 through 2014. Uh, what the report found largely was that Troutdale's housing supply is in good shape. We have ample opportunity and ample land, and the city had to develop about 720 housing units over the next 20-year period to fulfill its state obligations. The city hired a contractor, uh, Eco Northwest, to perform the analysis. They have a reputation for doing these well and ensuring that we're in conformance with state law and state rules. They have informed us and uh, they did so in a report that we were in conformance. So we thought we were all good. 
Uh, but here we are, and here we are uh, adopting the same document. There has been no substantive change to the document itself. What we are changing, though, is some of the text within Goal 10 and in the, um, in the um, comp plan. So I'm going to go to those comp plan particular sections, and then I'll come back to the approval criteria uh, of that. So we're going to switch over to the comp plan section. One moment while I get back up to that section. I'm not going to cover the entirety of the housing needs analysis tonight, although if there are any questions from members of the public, I'll be happy to bring it up. So this is a red line version of the goal 10 section in the comp plan. Um, you'll see that we have strike throughs as well as insertions. They're all marked in red. Insertions are underlined, strike throughs are struck through. And you'll see that several sections that exist right now, demographics, current housing inventory, future housing need are struck through with a notation that an entire section to be struck through now covered in a new housing needs analysis. So effectively, it's gonna be a reference document that is officially adopted, much like how we handle our transportation system plan is a reference document, but it is functionally part of our comprehensive plan, same principle. There is a neighborhood density section that exists that we will intend to maintain. It talks about uh, things within the 2040 Metro growth concept, is a section not to be fiddled with. So we suggest you maintain it the way it is. We do add a notice in there about accessory dwelling units, which has adopted by our code and allowed per state law. Uh, we added a notice about 80 units in there. It's also a former buildable lands inventory reference that has been struck through in its entirety because the build the new buildable lands inventory is contained within the new housing needs analysis. And so we have inserted a section called housing needs analysis and uh, just with a placement statement saying, what does it contain? And here's where you find the information. Elsewhere in the section, uh, there are a list of policies and goals were established uh, at the time of the last amendment and what went through during this periodic review. None of the goals are changing. And none of the goals need to change. If this housing needs analysis and this uh, amendment process goes through, none of the goals that you have outlined in your comp plan will need to change for at least six years. That's one of the motivations for getting this done by June 30th is to not have to go through that exercise to change your goals and policies. So the goals and policies that are currently listed in here will remain. The reference document that helps shape those goals and policies, which quite frankly are rather timeless, um, will remain in place. Are there any questions about the text of the comprehensive plan that we are proposing to amend with this application? Commissioners, have any questions? Second, my presentation is going to cover our findings, uh, which uh, have been prepared. As with any land use application, we have to develop findings. And these were presented um, initially, but we're going to go through them again tonight since we have a few people who were not on the call last time. When you're doing a comp plan amendment, you have three decision criteria. The first being compliance with the statewide land use goals. We've developed findings that say we've submitted the amendments to the LCD uh, uh, to determine compliance. We believe we have. Uh, we've certainly hired a contractor who believes they have and provided that deliverable to us. Several references to Oregon revised statutes and administrative rules, and those are actually baked with the HA itself. Um, the report also goes a step further and highlights and provides recent um, and prospective development, which further demonstrates and underscores the city's commitment to address housing need in our community and, frankly, in our region. Troutdale is doing its fair share and more uh, as far as uh, accommodating what the state has told us we need to accommodate for. We believe. 
criteria that we want. Public need is best satisfied by this particular change. Uh, what we say here is that the city's goal 10 standards have not been updated in nearly a decade. And we recognize the fact and we understand that we need to do more regular checks. And now the state has told us you must do these checks now every six years. So by adopting it in 2021, in 2027, we would be uh, in line for adopting it along with a host of other communities that are scheduled to do so. But since 2011, effectively, Troutdale's housing dynamics have changed, uh, as has our situation in the Job Center, as has the dynamic in Portland and in Gresham and in the surrounding areas as far as housing prices. So demand, desire, and regulations have changed. Um, we're a little bit unique in our suburban environment along the periphery of the metro region because we do not have urban reserves like say Gresham or Hillsboro or Sherwood or some of these other peripheral communities. We really don't have any place we can grow into. So um, apart from some unincorporated pockets that we have. So we have to be very mindful and logical and intelligent about decisions we make with housing. So we, in our buildable lands inventory uh, tells us that we still have sufficient housing or, or land supply to accommodate the housing. The housing need is calculated from, cent, uh, from census data, but ultimately from um, population growth data and projections from Portland State University. And they projected 720 housing units would need to be accommodated over the next 20 years. So doing this, having up-to-date information and understanding truly what our finite supply of land is, is in the public interest. So we believe the criterion is met for, for this regard by having a more up-to-date and robust housing need analysis. The change to the comp plan will not adversely affect the health, safety, and welfare of the community. We state that Troutdale is a predominantly residential community and available buildable lands are highlighted in the report uh, and can um, develop accordingly with minimal negative potential impacts. We're very fortunate, unlike a lot of communities, and we have a clear segregation of land uses where we have a largely industrial north area, a kind of freeway oriented commercial area a downtown, and then even a, a commercial strip along Stark. But we have really larger, well-defined residential areas of development in that regard. Um, Several of the more impactful properties that are highlighted in this OI lands inventory are in fact proximate to commercial land uses and they contain frontages to collector or arterial roads. In many cases, they are already appropriately zoned for medium or high density residential. Um, it encourages a more intelligent uh, and efficient use of, of land and it allows for a, a lower cost impact to the city for development, providing services. One thing that has been increasingly called out and one thing the state increasingly is requiring cities to address is the issue of housing affordability. And um, we have to uh, address it. And it's uh, development of affordable housing, particularly for those populations with income below 50% uh, of the area median income is important. Uh, uh, Chris, Chris, sorry to interject in you. Could you please slow down a second? I'm having a problem hearing you. Your, your voice goes on and off, and then you're going a little too fast. And okay, I'm sorry. We miss, we miss words. Sure. Thank uh, you. I'm going to take my mask off, and I hope Mr. Widilla will Appreciate. Thank you. allow me to do that. Well, okay. Um, the development of affordable housing in particular is something the state requires us really to address head on. Um, in our area, the housing need analysis to find a need for us to address housing for populations of 50% of the area median income or below. Um, the information here you see in red is an addition, is additional language from your original packet and the original finding that we had in the packet. We've been told and we were provided commentary from the Fair Housing Council of Oregon that we needed to expand our finding on this uh, to be more in line with the state expectation for a factual basis. So we've, we've provided some additional information on how we believe our housing policies, 
our housing strategy and frankly, the delivery of new housing, how that has affected um, or not negatively affected the potential to develop housing for all income levels. So what we're basically saying here is that, look, we are already on track. We're halfway to our 2040 goal in 2021. We are looking at potential even upzoning or allowed higher densities, maybe in the confluence property. That's the URA next to downtown where we could have a denser environment there. We know that we'll be having to work with Home Forward potentially on the uh, Home Forward project, which will uh, look to address specifically um, housing, affordable housing for that particular income group. So the city is not shying away from its expectations and because of those actions is addressing them head on. And the remaining buildable lands that are available to us can be used for a variety of purposes and a variety of housing types. And that's the other thing too. We're not just cranking out single family homes. Most of our recent development has actually been so-called middle housing, the townhomes, attached homes, things of that nature, or apartments, either at the market rate or potentially income restricted levels. So the city is certainly doing its share and is developing housing to the market um, that the expectation and the, the trends of housing are, are suggesting it needs to do so. So we believe we're in compliance and, and that the criterion is met here that this housing needs analysis calls us to do things that we are already doing or accomplishing. Accomplishing. So our ultimate recommendation to you to recommend to city council is that you should recommend approval of these changes. The document produced last year has not substantially changed. It is the same document that council adopted last year. And the only difference is you are now placing not notice in the comp plan and council adopts it by ordinance rather than by resolution. So if the facts haven't changed since last year, this document should still be good. And this body, I will remind you, also recommended approval of the HNA last year to council before the resolution went into effect. With that, I'll be happy to take any questions. I know that was a lot of information. Yes, Chris. Thank you. Just, so just to be sure, once, once the planning commission approves uh, this case file, then the council will adopt the housing needs analysis by ordinance. It's establishing a policy. That's why by ordinance, of course, and not by resolution. Perfect. Yeah. And you can recommend denial if you so choose, but council yeah. decisions on binding, of course. Actually, I, you know, I, I, I might jump the gun. I don't know what my colleagues feels, what is the sentiment, but I'm ready to put a motion on the table right now. Uh, and then, and then co no, conversation can, can still go on, but I would like to put a motion on the table at this point. Is that acceptable? Great. Um, so I think, I think we have to close the, the, the public hearing. We have very to well. Yes, you're right. I'm going to jump the guns here. Are there any other comments or questions from the commissioners? Then a motion to close the public hearing. Well, we have to also check for public comment as well. Is there anybody in the audience have any comments? I hear none. Better. Motion to close the public hearing. Uh, I move that we close the public hearing. Do we have a second? I'll second that. You got a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Okay. And do we have a motion to move this forward? I will make a motion that we approve uh, case file 71-01 for a recommendation for city council. I second. Motion and second. And are, are we taking the whole package on this motion? I think that's, uh, that's with the whole. findings as adopt as, as written yeah. or yeah, as written. Okay. The roll call. Commissioner Wittrin? Yes. Commissioner Waddell? 
Yes. Commissioner Maloney? Yes. Commissioner Prickett? Yes. Commissioner Wilcox? Yes. And the other two aren't present. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Planning Commissioners. And again, the matter will be before uh, City Council for first reading on June 8th and then second reading June 22nd as scheduled. And the staff, any, Kenny Morgan? Uh, yes, uh, just, just a couple of quick notes. Uh, your next meeting is going to be on June 9th. We have another big meeting. Uh, we're going to have two type four hearings. Uh, one will be a map amendment and text amendment combination for the confluence property for the rezoning uh, of that property, as well as the establishment of a new zoning district, something we've talked about in a few meetings past. The other will be a text amendment uh, for and another item we've, we've briefly talked about uh, in work session, a text amendment for age restricted housing and potential breaks in the development code on certain things. So those will be the two items you have. On the 9th, we'll have another uh, meeting on the 23rd. And then I think we're back to one meeting per month uh, through the summer. So we'll try to make sure your docket is what it is. But as people keep applying, it's one of those things that we'll, we just have to accommodate. And we don't want to be stretching you all to 11 or midnight, <laughs> trying to hammer out three or four applications. So we appreciate your service. Um, Chair wanted to communicate to you all. He was sorry he was unable to attend tonight. Uh, he had a, a situation come up that he needed to attend to during the day and uh, he wishes to say hello and his apologies for not being able to attend. I think Mr. Allen mentioned he was also out, uh, but he spoke also of his support of both applications. And I think he was uh, agreeing with you from afar, though if not officially. Uh, lastly, the city has hired a new permit tech. We're we have a tremendous volume of building permit applications uh, this spring. We've hired an additional uh, permit specialist to help with the volume. Hopefully that will that'll take hold. Um, uh, Keegan Bockhorst is his name from Colorado. And the city is also currently recruiting Arini's successor because there was no replacing Arini. Um, we are uh, in the middle of that recruitment and are getting a lot of good qualified applicants for that. And we're hoping to bring a new planner aboard probably in early July or early to mid July. Um, with that, Mr. Chair, I mean, Amber, have I forgotten anything from your perspective? Okay. Uh, with that, we'll yield back to any uh, commissioner comments. Commissioners, any comments? Motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I'll second that. We've got a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Good night. Thank you, Chris, again, as always. Thank you. Amber, too.